patristic doctrine. Let's get into that then. Let's keep in mind, though, that most people who are watching are like, filioque, I, I get it, means and the sun or something. So help us, uh, maybe, I know you're yeah, writing a filioque. book on this, so it's going to be like drinking water from a fire hydrant. Oh, but... no, I, I can keep this short. I have to, because, you know. Um, but filioque, you know, it, in and of itself, you know, means uh, and the sun. And it, obviously that, that, that's not explanatory, right? It's couched in a larger structure of thinking. Uh, that's in the procession of the Holy Spirit, which again, that's also couched in a larger structure about the Trinity. The Filioque is possibly one of the most difficult mm. doctrines you can study. So I, I, that's one of the reasons why not many people are interested in it. And more so, that's one of the reasons why people don't look to study it to decipher between Orthodoxy and Catholicism. Because you spend a month studying it and you realize you need to, you need to read five years, you need to read Platonism, you need to read Dionysius, you need to read, like, you need to read a lot to understand where the Byzantines were coming from when they constructed the Trinity, where the Latins were, particularly Augustine, when he, you know, Trinitized the one guy, the one God, and how he did it. Um, so it's very tough, so people don't usually go there. Mm. But I think if you do, you'll see that at least the first half of the church. So the first 1,000 years, the Latin West was clearly filioquist. They, they clearly believed the filioque. Augustine believed the filioque. Scholars are pretty much unanimous on that. Augustine set the pattern paradigmatically for Western theology, especially on the Trinity. Pope Leo the Great, Gregory the Great, Isidore of Seville, Leander of Seville, uh, I mean, Western saints teaching the filioque. And one of the things that not a lot of people know about is the Queen Cunque, the Athanasian Creed. Um, it's, it's linked to Athanasius, probably not mm -hmm. made by Athanasius, probably a fifth century production. But that Queen Cunque means whoever wishes in Latin. It has the filioque in that creed, but it, whoever wishes to be saved must keep the Catholic faith inviolate without which he will perish everlastingly. And in it, says the filioque. So they were already believing the filioque as uh, an apostolic deposit, you know. Can, so the Orthodox are going to have to look back and figure out how half the trunk of the tree was corrupt for the first 1,000 years with the same corruption that they gave as a reason to separate from the Catholic West. And while that is not, doesn't give you the butterflies, you know, <laughs> to me that is conclusive. You know, I, I couldn't do that. It would just be too incoherent. What about the Eastern Fathers? So that's a good question. So I think the Catholic Church can bridge the, the Latin and the Eastern Fathers. Whereas I don't think the Orthodox can do that in the converse. So the ortho, the, the Byzantines never said the, 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 son, the, the spirit proceeds from the father and the son. It's not, it's not there, okay? The, 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 the Eastern fathers, they never say that, okay? okay? Um, and and, and when, they, when they began to hear about that, it was, you know, it was a concern. But um, the, 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 like St. Gregory of Nyssa, St. Basil the Great, um, some major, Cyril of Alexandria. These are like home run hitting Eastern fathers. They at least believe that the, the spirit proceeds from the father through the son in his personal existence. So in other words, you have a producing principle and then you have the terminating product. Mm -hmm. The producing principle is the father and the son. And then you have the terminating product, which is the Holy Spirit. So the Father and the Son produce the Holy Spirit eternally. Well, whether you say it's from the Father and the Son or from the Father through the Son, mm. if you're speaking in this context, you're a filioquist. You know, from the Father and the Son, from the Father through the Son, you're a filioquist. Okay? So that's why it's important to know that Photius, when he started to criticize the filioque, he, he could not tolerate 
either from or through. You know, today we're kind of, we see a lot of, you know, ecumenical Orthodox saying, oh no, you know, we, we accept this dia huyu through the sun. Yeah, through the sun. Well, wait a minute. You know, you guys were condemning that for centuries. You know, the only time that the Greeks accepted this idea that the Holy Spirit can come through the from the Father through the Son is at the Council of Blackerne, as far as I'm, I'm aware, at the Council of Blackerne in 1285, where they relegated this issue of procession to the mode of God's energy or activity. So when God does an action, it's it's got this triadic structure from the Father through the Son in the Holy Spirit. It's got the one, two, three. It's got a it's got a certain triadic order. Mm-hmm. So this spirit comes from the Son in that sense. But that's not that has nothing to do with the hypostatic origin. That's that's in the realm of activity, God's activity, which is equal in the Father, equal in the Son, equal in the Spirit. So that's not a hypostatic procession. That's an energetic or an active procession. Much different than the issue of what I think, like Gregory of Nyssa was teaching, which is that the Holy Spirit originates from the Father as cause, but not without the mediation of the mm. Son. That's hypostatic origination. And I think the Orthodox have denounced that view in their condemnations of the Catholic filioque. When you say the Orthodox, what is how? how so they... yeah, so the so the Council of Lyons, 1274, the Catholics yeah. taught the filioque. Well, in response to that, you had the Council of Blackerne. That that was the in in Constantinople, you had certain people like John Beckos and other Unionists. They called them. Those who, who 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 read the decrees of Lyon and said, "No, we can we can agree, we can agree with the filioque because our fathers, they don't say it in the same terms, but they mean the same things." Well, that pro-unionist party was swallowed up by an anti-unionist party led by Gregory of Cyprus um, at the Council of Blackerne in 1285. So that's what ten years after Lyon, something like that. Um, so that was like the official Orthodox reaction to the filioque. Then you had the Council of Florence, right? There, okay, going back to that issue of the Latin Fathers, mm-hmm. at, the, at the Council of Florence, you, the Greek delegates were like, wait a minute, if the Latin Fathers teach the filioque, it's impossible that the Latin Fathers and the Greek Fathers are at odds because they were in communion and there was one Holy Spirit that they were receiving. Mm. So that was one of the major motivations for why they agreed while they were there. Because it was, it was absolutely clear that at least the, Latins, the Latin fathers taught it. There's no Latin and, East, uh, Latin and Greek in Christ, right? Just like there's no um, Jew, Gentile or Jew in Christ. Now, we talk about legitimate differences, but when it comes to the faith, there is no, Mm -hmm. there shouldn't be. East and West. Yeah. There is no East and West in Christ because all are one in Christ Jesus. So how do you have Latin fathers teaching a heresy who we venerate in our liturgical books and then the Eastern fathers completely disagreeing and we're going to sit here and go with only the Eastern fathers? It was the Catholics were saying no. There's a way to bridge them. As far as I'm concerned, the Catholic side was the only way to bridge the, the fathers. Whereas the the contemporary, you know, the Orthodox reaction then, the Orthodox reaction now, I think divides the fathers. Um, and so that's another non-sensational, maybe too academic uh, realm of falsification for me uh, or for others. But it, it seems conclusive for me. Is yeah. this the main reason that if you were to leave the Catholic Church, God forbid, you would back, perhaps become Coptic because they haven't condemned it in the same way? Or have they? That's another good reason, yeah. Mm. That's another good reason. Um, although, uh, you know, I, I've run into some Coptics online that they condemn the filioque. I don't know if they should or can because um, Cyril of Alexandria, which is, the, you know, their main proponent, patristically speaking, Athanasius, you know, both 
heroes of Alexandria, Egypt, I, I think they're both, they both teach the filioque, you know? So yeah, I, that's, that would be a, if I had to think critically, like, you know, like a Navy SEAL who pitches his tent, what's the next wise move? My gut obviously would say, well, the Byzantine Orthodox will be easier because they're more plenty, they're more mm -hmm. plenty here and I'm familiar. But if I'm going to go with my mind, um, yeah, I couldn't go there. So if I couldn't go to the Catholic Church or them, I'd probably have to consider the, the, the Coptics and Syriac. But, you know, at, at that point, you know, I, I may be not coming out of my tent for a while. <laughs> I don't know, mm -hmm. you know, so I hate to be difficult, but uh, you know, this yeah. is terrific. This yeah. is really great. Yeah. I, I wish it was easier. Yeah. And when people come to me and say, how do I resolve this? How do I resolve this? I want to, I just want to know the truth. What's the answer? I say, well, mm -hmm. I hate to tell you this, but it's, I cannot give you an easy one, two, three. I just can't. Mm -hmm. Everyone that's ever given me one of those, I've, through study, I realized they didn't know what they were talking about. Mm. So I'm just, I'm not going to do you the same evil of, of, of something like that. Although I do think if you search hard enough, you can get the answer. I, I don't want to sound boastful here, but I, I, I think I can defend my position. I think I could defend the Catholic position over the Byzantine position, but it's not easy. What was it like for you going from a Western experience to an Eastern experience, just culturally?